In this video, we're going to discuss the solution to question 11 from the practice midterm exam for Calculus 2, Math 1220. And so we want to evaluate the indefinite integral where we have a function x cubed plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1, and we want to integrate with respect to x here. So the first thing I notice here is that we have an improper fraction. We have an x cubed over x, and so as such, we're going to want to do some polynomial division. We could try to weasel our way around a couple of things. Um, one of the most straightforward things is just to do long division, right? Um, if you divide the top, x cubed plus x plus 1, we divide that by x squared plus 1. We're going to first ask ourselves, how many times does x squared go into x cubed? Look at the leading terms there. x cubed over x squared, that gives you an x. We're going to record that on the top right here. Next, we're going to take x times our divisor, x squared plus 1. This gives us x cubed plus x, and we're going to record that below. x cubed plus x, like so, and we're going to subtract that from above. Uh, you're going to notice here that the x squared cancel, the x cubed cancel, and then also the x cancels as well. There's really not much left. You just end up with a 1 right here. 1 is too small to work with here, and so this is actually going to be a remainder. And so what we can do is we can then substitute our, our function with now, we're going to get the polynomial x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So that polynomial division is going to be super helpful for us on this example. Now, in this example, we could have actually got weaseled away from the polynomial division because it actually turned out so simple. We actually could have done something like the following. If you take x cubed plus x over x squared plus 1, and you break off the 1 over here. The idea is x cubed plus x is just x times x squared plus 1, for which that cancels, giving you the same thing. So this one could have, we could have avoided long division doing some type of short division, but what I'm trying to say is you should just plan for long division if the fraction is improper. If it's a proper fraction, it's completely unnecessary. So now the question is, what do we do here? Um, so do we so the antiderivative of x is going to be pretty straightforward with this one right over here we have this x squared plus one on the bottom it's an irreducible quadratic polynomial so uh, i mean notice this is a proper fraction in fact the denominator doesn't factor at all this is this is already a partial fraction decomposition although you might need to do a partial fraction decomposition on question number 11 not necessary here um, instead how do we do this one well, two approaches, you could do a u substitution because you have this square root of x squared plus 1 squared on the bottom. You could try the u substitute, not u substitution, trig substitution, x equals tangent theta. Um, that would be perfectly acceptable, in which case then you get dx equals secant squared theta d theta. And notice the square root of x squared plus 1 would equal secant theta as well. So the antiderivative of x is going to be x squared over 2, and then you have to integrate. The dx, remember, becomes a secant squared theta d theta. The, since the square root of x squared plus 1 equals secant, the bottom would then become a secant squared theta, in which case those cancel out. You have this x squared over 2 plus the integral of d theta. Well, that's pretty nice. It just becomes theta plus a constant. Don't forget the plus constants. I will look for that there. And so then coming back to our original substitution, solving for theta, theta equals tangent, tangent inverse of x. And so our final result would then be x squared over 2 plus arctangent of x plus a constant. And this would be our correct result. In order to get full credit, if we do any type of substitutions, you need to switch your variables back into x. You need all x's, no thetas or u's or anything else. That's okay in the interim, but for the final answer, it needs back in the original variable x. Um, I also want to mention that many of you might have noticed earlier that if you take the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, you might already know that this antiderivative is tangent inverse of x, and you could have jumped the whole trig substitution part and gone straight to there. I'm perfectly fine with that. This is a very common antiderivative, and therefore recognizing it without any trig sub is perfectly appropriate. But if you didn't recognize it, uh, be aware that a trig substitution would help you out here. 
Now this, this one was a partial fraction type problem, although we didn't actually do any partial fractions. We used long division and we, we sort of did a trig sub. It depends whether you did it or not. Those are necessary parts uh, for these type of questions from 7.4. Uh, but one of the most important parts is actually doing the partial fraction decomposition. And so just because you can see the PFD on this problem on the practice test doesn't mean it won't show up on the actual test. You're gonna make sure you're, you're familiar with factorization techniques, the templates and all of that stuff as well.